You're listening to the Dungeons, Dragons, and Psychology Podcast. Imagine you're sitting around the table with your friends, character sheets in hand, immersed in a world of fantasy, danger, and magic. You're on the brink of a pivotal moment in your story, and the outcome hangs in the balance. So what do you do? You reach for your trusty set of polyhedral dice, and with a roll, the story unfolds. I'm Robert Walker, author of Session Zero, the DMG to writing great campaigns in any system. And this is my show, where I teach collaborative storytellers how to have more immersive campaigns using psychology. And today we're going to be unraveling the secrets behind dice rolls and talking about how to use them to craft a narrative that's both engaging, unpredictable, and also fun for both players and the game master. Now just a quick note on my recording quality today, I am recording on the road as I am traveling for work once again, Uh, but please bear with me, I still wanted you to have an episode uh, that was new for this week. So let's get into it. Now, first remember that dice mechanics aren't just random number generators. They're tools that can help you tell the story in a unique and captivating way. So here's a key piece of advice. You have to embrace unpredictability. When you reach for a 20-sided dice, or if you're one of the systems that use a D6 or the D10s, whatever it is, you're inviting chance to play a role in your narrative. So you have to let those high rolls be moments of triumph and the low rolls add tension and adversity. Your character's success and failures are what give depth and authenticity to your tale. Another tip for using dice in your storytelling is to let them influence the plot. If a player rolls a critical success, maybe you add an additional hidden clue or They strike a powerful blow that changes the course of the story. But on the flip side, those critical failures, you could consider introducing unexpected complications or plot twists that challenge the characters in new and exciting ways. Now, I always think of critical roles or critical fumbles or whatever your system calls them. You don't always have to think of them as failures. They don't literally have to mean you fail at this challenge. I like the idea of they add something to make it more challenging, or they twist the story in an alternative way so that the party can still sort of be moving towards the the same goal line, but it's going to shift and how they're going to get there has to be different. I've used the analogy on this show a lot of thinking of your overall narrative as a road trip where you know where you're starting and you know where you're ending but you're letting your players dictate the route you're taking along the way. Well, one of the ways that you can let your players dictate the routes that you're taking to get there is by using the roll of the dice as a mode for their decision-making. If they're rolling poorly, that's sort of making the decision of the path that they're taking to get towards that final destination. Remember, it's also not just all about the numbers. It's also about the emotions and the psychology behind these roles. When players pick up their dice, their hearts race with anticipation, especially if the role is an important one to the story. They're investing emotionality into the outcome, and you can use this to your advantage. Encourage your players to describe how their characters are reacting to their success and failures. I've even gone so far as when a character criticals, allowing them to describe what happens on the attack or on the skill that is really cool about it. And this can give them the opportunity to contribute to the narrative collaboratively. It is, after all, a collaborative storytelling game. So dive into the psychology of their characters and look for storytelling opportunities that coincide with these uh, epic successes or failures or or changes of of what needs to happen in the story. Never forget this power of collaboration. TTRPGs are a shared storytelling experience. Involve the players in shaping the narrative. Use their ideas of how they envision their characters' actions, how they want to resolve situations, 
and then let the dice provide a framework of how well they did that or how epically it did not go according to plan. But it is the players breathing the life into the story through the mechanics of the dice. And lastly, remember that it's not just about winning or losing. It's about the journey. The most memorable moments often come from the unexpected. From those times when the dice take the story in an entirely new direction that nobody saw coming, if you embrace that little bit of chaos and you find that your adventures are more thrilling because of they go in a way that you didn't expect and there is something about surprise that grabs our attention. So even as a dungeon master, being surprised can be important in being immersed in the story. Let's head over to Tricks of the Trade. And for today, what we're doing in Tricks of the Trade, I'm going to give you two creative ways to use critical successes and critical failures to shape the narrative in your story. So the first one is going to be a fate-defying use of it. This is a little bit more of your traditional. So on a critical success, when a player rolls their critical success, their character doesn't just succeed, they achieve something extraordinary. So this moment becomes an opportunity to grant their character a temporary narrative advantage. For example, if a character is attempting to persuade a hostile NPC to join their quest and they roll that success, perhaps the NPC not only agrees, but is so moved by their plight or by their quest that they pledge their undying loyalty. This NPC could become an ally and have a significant presence that influences the unfolding story going forward. Conversely, if they roll the critical failure on that, then instead of a straightforward failure, you could introduce a concept of a twist of fate. This twist could involve an unexpected stroke of luck that counters the failure. For example, if the character is trying to disarm a trap and fails, rather than setting it off, they might accidentally tr trigger a hidden cache containing information or treasure. This twist could reward players for creative thinking, and it could keep the story dynamic moving forward. So you don't always have to use that failure as a success. You can use it. You don't always have to use that failure as a straight failure. You can use it as an alternative success. So maybe the trap goes off, yes, and they take the normal amount of damage from the trap going off, but the twist of fate also caused something unique to happen in the room. Next, we have uh, echoes of the past. So when a player rolls a critical success in this concept, use it as an opportunity to tie their success to moments in their backstory. This connection could reveal hidden talents, forgotten memories, or long-lost connections to the world. For example, a character with a mysterious past rolls this critical success during a research task. Perhaps they stumble upon a forgotten diary entry that hints at a legacy or the true nature of their past abilities and this knowledge could lead their unique character development and quest hooks. And then on the flip side, the critical failures can, can unveil unresolved issues from their past. If they fail at a crucial task, they might trigger a traumatic memory or resurrect an old uh, enemy, uh, complicating their journey, for instance. So their attempt to negotiate with a rival faction could critically fail, and the failure could lead to a rival from their past resurfacing with a personal vendetta, adding more depth to the character's story and layers of intrigue. So these are ways that you can use successes and criticals uh, that are supposed to be failures and twist them in very unique ways to your story. Now, I wouldn't recommend doing this in all stories, obviously, but if you use it with the right amount of flavor and put it in the right places in your game, you can use those dice to really unfold the narrative in different ways or really unique ways that will be memorable to your players. That is going to be all for today on the podcast. I just wanted to get a quick episode out. Again, I am still coming to the end of my master's thesis. I have officially begun my last class, and I am so close uh, to getting it done. I will be putting a lot more time and energy into this after that is finished. Uh, but in the meantime, remember, you can always track me down on Instagram, dungeons underscore dragons underscore psychology, 
And from there, you can find a link tree to all of our various places. Also, we do have uh, the Patreon going as well. A very, a very, very strong thank you to all of the patrons who are supporting the show and helping it grow. As always, Cyclothids, we will see you next session.